back from living on the edge, back from a disease that she says nearly killed her. I was in trouble, and I felt terrible. I thought I was dying. And uh, I was tired. I was sick, and I was tired. I was tired of pretending to be all right when I really didn't feel all right. My self-esteem was shot to hell, you know. Um, my faith was very shaky. I went through what uh, everybody who has this disease goes through. Last week I was 40. <laughs> Liza's disease was addiction to alcohol and prescribed drugs, and it kept her off the stage for over a year. She reckons she's earned the right to feel good about reaching 40. When Mozart was my age, he was already dead five years. Her show at the Palladium Theater in London also marked another comeback for Liza. It was here that she first performed with her mother, Judy Garland, over 20 years ago. Judy was then the age Liza is now, and her own addiction to alcohol and drugs was taking its toll. She hoped that by sharing the stage with her 18-year-old daughter, the audience would treat her performance more kindly. If happy little bluebirds fly... Be... I grew up around watching a lady who took pills and swore on my life that I would never take a pill. Swore. And didn't realize I was doing it until I suddenly had that rev... I suddenly thought, wait a minute. What am I doing? What am I doing? Liza was the daughter of Judy's brief marriage to film director Vincent Minnelli. Her childhood was spent in Hollywood, where there were good times and bad times. She was spoiled by her adoring father, but... She also had to live with her mother's uncontrollable moods and frequent suicide attempts. At 16, Liza escaped to New York. Her ambition was to get a job on Broadway and to do it without help from her famous family. I didn't want to stand out. I was embarrassed. Um, I wanted to be in the chorus, basically. I wanted to be in a dressing room with a lot of other dancers. Uh, I didn't want the star dressing room with, with, with isolation. It wasn't what I had in mind when I thought of the New York Theater. The New York Theater in me was, was working with other people, was doing something. It was like all the movies I would watch on TV about everybody having a good time after the show. You, want, <laughs> you, you know? Want, you wanted to fit in? I wanted a family, and I wanted to fit in. But Liza didn't stay in the chorus long. In 1972, she played the lead in the movie Cabaret, the part of Sally Bowles, an outrageous nightclub singer in Berlin of the 30s. A tiger is a tiger, not a lamb, mine hair. You'll never turn the vinegar to jam, mine hair. People sometimes think of you as parts that you've played. It's like they, they expect you to be like Sally Bowles, for instance. Yeah. And so you are. Toodaloo. But she was more careless than I am, I think. You know, and more reckless than I am. But I, there have been times in my life when I've been, yes, a lot like that. Careless and reckless? Mm -hmm. Farewell, my lieber hair. It was a fine affair, but now it's... For her performance as Sally Bowles, Liza won the Academy Award. Yeah, you're better off without me. But even then, at the height of her success, there were rumors that she was drinking too much, taking too many pills. Liza now admits those rumors were true. You should have known by now you've every cause to doubt me, my hair. I had taken Valium, which seems so... Uh, harmless and it's the worst thing that you can possibly get addicted to 
Uh, I've been taking that for 15 years. To lose weight, I would take a diet pill. I took Placidil to sleep. But mind you, these are all prescribed drugs. These weren't street drugs. I didn't feel like I had a drug problem. Let's see. Um, and I didn't drink that much, and I drank stupid drinks. I drank scotch and coke. So I was all constantly fooling myself. You know, because who could be an alcoholic who drank scotch and coke? Who could be an alcoholic who drank Bailey's Irish cream? There were rumors during the 70s that you were drinking a lot, that you were taking a lot of pills. You denied it all. Yeah, I did. I, I remember one uh, uh, quote I read that said, uh, I'm terrified of any kind of drugs. I don't even take aspirin. Yeah. That was in 1972. That's called denial. I was lying because I didn't want anybody to know that I was imperfect, um, that I was under stress. I always wanted to be the hero, you know, I wanted, I wanted to be what everybody thought that I could be. Liza started to come down with mysterious illnesses, illnesses she now acknowledges were related to her addiction. At the beginning of 1984, she was really in trouble and missing performances in a Broadway show. It was this woman, her half-sister Lorna, the daughter of Judy Garland and oh, yeah, Sid Luft, yeah. who was close enough to her to confront Liza with the truth. You need somebody who loves you enough to risk that anger. You need somebody who loves you enough to risk your wrath. My sister said, I think I know what's wrong with you. You're going and having all these blood tests. I think you're chemically dependent and you don't realize it. And I said, well, what do you mean? <laughs> Well, what will I do? What will I do? She said, you go, go to the Betty Ford Center. That's what you do. I said, but what will everybody think? And she said, screw them. Doesn't matter what they think. It's your life. You know, you spend so much time thinking what other people think. They don't think about you. They don't care what you think. Go save your life. Please, you're pushing forward now. After treatment, all addicts have to face the outside world. Liza had to face it on a larger scale than most. Here in Paris, her one-night show was a sellout. When I came out of the Ford Center and had to walk back on a stage in front of a lot of people, it wasn't any harder for me to do that than it was for the woman who had been the housewife next to me to walk back into her church group the next Sunday after getting out of the first scene. It's The facts are different, but the feelings are the same. Nothing's impossible I have found For when my chin is on the ground Just pick yourself up Dust yourself forth And start all over again was it easy to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and start all over again? Anytime you have to take a really good, hard look at yourself, it's tough. Especially if you've been lying to yourself. Do I see? Hi, everybody. <laughs> to gain the strength to stay sober at parties like this one held in her honor in Paris, Liza regularly attends meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous in whichever city she's playing. Those AA meetings help her resist well-meaning Frenchmen who can't quite believe that even an American would prefer Coca-Cola to champagne. But sometimes, Liza admits, the champagne has won. Have you ever fallen off the wagon since you left the Betty Ford Center? Um, well, it depends on what you, you mean. Had a drink? Yes. What did you go through when you did it? I went and got help right away. You know, I felt terrible, and I went and, and uh, said I'm scared, you know. You, so, you start, it's like, I call my disease slick. <laughs> it's like Slick goes, what's the matter with you? You can have a beer, you can have one drink. That's your disease saying, oh, you can, you can, yeah, you can have one. 
and you can't handle it. It's much smarter than you are. It's cunning. It's baffling. It is tricky. It's it's uh, tough. It's lonelier and tougher with hope. You burn up. Tomorrow he might. Life proved too tough for Liza's mother. Judy Garland died at 47 of an overdose of pills. Liza now realizes just what her mother went through. What I really understood more was how isolated she felt, because I had begun to feel that isolated. And then you find out that you don't have to. And it's such a relief. Of one man, woman, looking for the man that goes away. Judy's isolation was best expressed in her song. She sang about the man that got away. I'm not much to look at. Liza sings about a man who stays. Just glad I'm living. That lucky to be. I got a man. Crazy for me. He's funny that way. Hi. The man who has stayed in Liza's life is sculptor Mark Jero, her third husband. Their seven-year-old marriage almost didn't survive Liza's addiction and what Mark says was a problem of his own. But now they're back together again. You had a problem, too, an, an alcohol problem. Yeah, a fast lane problem. It involves other pleasures. I mean, you know, I moved into the fast lane, and the fast lane ran me over, and I got out of there. <laughs> is that we when, both did. Is that yeah. when you two met? No, we were in the fast lane together. We got yeah, out of the fast, fast lane together, too. Sure. I used to have this girlfriend known as Elsie. For her encore at the London Palladium, Liza sang the title song from the movie Cabaret. The song for which she's best remembered. It's about a friend of Sally Bowles named Elsie, who dies from drinking drugs. The day she died, the neighbors came to snicker. Well, that's what comes from too much pills and liquor. The song used to go like this. When I go, I'm going like hell. Now, Liza sings it like this. When I go, I'm not going like Elsie. Stop by admitting from cradle to tomb. have a line in your show it's it's not how you start it's how you finish it's how you finish yeah how will you finish i have no idea all i know is that the day that i that i do finish i'll be trying <laughs>